MGTOW, the Men Going Their Own Way acronym. These guys are supposed to be focusing on advancing themselves as men. They're supposed to be working on getting their money straight, their bodies together, getting their minds right, getting their education on, traveling the world, you know, generally being all about themselves and becoming better males for their own benefit, not for the benefit of women. They always stress that. But, of course, like in any organization, there's going to be those that adhere to the principles established for the organization and are considered to be examples of success. There are those. And then there's going to be that radical fringe element, you know, the hangers on and the losers who just want to be a part of something. So they adopt that uh, philosophy and twist it into something sordid and stupid and violent and disgusting. Now, from what I've seen online, this, this seems to be the mindset of 90% of the guys who claim that they're involved in this red pill MGTOW crap. So when you listen to them, which I don't recommend, but since this is my profession, this is what I do, their number one resentment and the repetitive rhetoric that they shout over and over is that women get advantages over men socially, legally, and within relationships and marriage. So they have decided in their little minds that to avoid females, avoid commitment, and remove themselves from the reach of women being able to hurt them is the best solution. Now I pointed out to them several different times, you have no one to blame but other men, really old white men, because those are the ones who created all these laws and the structure and all these rules and regulations, the court system, the police system, and everything else that you find to be so against you. Old white men did that to you. So why are you bitching at women? That makes no sense, okay. But you know, so they say that's what they want to do anyway. They want to avoid women. They want to avoid any involvement with women. They want to avoid commitment. They want anything to do with women. But they lie. They lie. They lie like dogs. They lie like carpets. Because unless one of these guys goes all the way and becomes like a celibate monk or a priest or something, or of course they could turn gay, they still look at women to give them something and to do for them. Although they don't want to do shit for you or give to you back, they still want you to do for and give to them. And that narcissistic sociopathic mentality has given way to what they call the pump and dump theory. The pump and dump, not theory, the pump and dump method of treating women. And they promote this activity amongst themselves and they love to post it online over and over like it's a battle cry. And they like to throw it up in women's face like we give a fuck what you do with your raggedy ass little tired ashy dick. And then, you know, they want to, they want to, at the same time they're talking about pumping and dumping, they want to put women down and negate them in every way possible but they still want to set you up to use you for sex okay now you all need to be very clear on where this video is going and what i'm gonna be talking about here because these motherfuckers ain't shit okay now though they can and they do try to avoid giving anything to women they're all totally resentful that women would even expect any from anything from them they're not really going their own way too fast and they ain't going very far away from some pussy that's that's what's real now they may cry about american women and all this old shit but you see them that you know they're busy on these online dating sites trying to date women overseas to go to asia or go to some other foreign country where women are third world and broke and you know to take set them up to take advantage of them and their neediness but the bottom line is they still after women they still want something from women because like i said otherwise they would be gay or they would be a monk or they would be a priest okay those are the three options you know be celibate over there somewhere and don't worry about what women are doing with their vaginas that's not your business and they ain't even going anywhere fast and far away from my channel because you know the, for the fast few weeks I've been inundated with white dudes coming over here in droves whining about how women have treated them and I have to keep reminding them you're talking about white chicks okay this is a black woman's channel and the majority of my traffic not all there's some some cool white chicks that participate in this form and Latina and you know other races but the majority over 85 percent of my traffic are black women so for white dudes to come to this channel whining about what white women do to them is stupid we don't give a fuck 
that don't have shit to do with us. So you you crying on deaf, you know, some ears that really don't give a shit about what you're talking about. And then to go and make videos about what I said about some shit that don't have nothing to do with you. You know, it just shows you just too focused on women. You too focused on what women do, what women say, what women think, everything. Even though you claim you're going your own way. That's why I say y'all, you all don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're talking, you're going in circles. You're talking on both sides of your neck. You say one thing, but you do a goddamn another. You ain't going no goddamn where. Shut up. But the bottom line is, these guys <coughs> surely can't be expected because they get some sympathy and support from black women. Because if so, they need to get their face fixed because I'm about to crack that shit wide open. Because I don't know what kind of cognitive dissonance these white dudes are suffering. But, you know, to come here with that bullshit is ridiculous. I don't care what happens to you. I don't give a fuck what you think, what you want, nothing. But I'm still getting ready to, to, to lecture to women about your asses because you need, these chicks need a reality check and they need to know what you're up to. Okay? So that's what we're going to do today, ladies. We're going to talk about this MGTOWs and the player theory that women are only good for one thing, and that is to pump and dump. You know what that means? That means they fill you up with sperm and then they dump you. They have no intention of being with you, no intention of loving you, no intention of respecting you, no intention of being in a relationship with you, building anything with you, creating anything, for making dreams to get nothing. All they want to do is fuck you, and in which, you know, they could do that to a cantaloupe. So, you know, before you ladies start thinking that, with you know, them approaching you is something special and unique, understand that they ain't about shit, and you're going to be setting yourself up to be what a lot of these brothers call a cum dumpster, just a hole for them to relieve themselves in like they're going to the toilet. Basically, what they're doing is jacking off, and then they're using your body to do it. And, you know, then they want to crow about it online like that's something. What is that? That is a sociopath, okay? That is someone who intentionally wants to hurt and use other people. That is the text de textbook definition of a sociopath. So what makes men like this? You know, we always like to delve into, you know, the root cause. In this particular instance, who gives a shit? Let's just begin at the point of where we acknowledge that that's what the majority of them are. That's what they think. And they take great pride in being these kind of assholes and jerks. Let's start there. Because, actually, I want to share something with you. Because, you know, there's so many videos on this channel that if you aren't, you know, spending hours going through each one and reading all the comments, you would miss a lot of stuff. So I want to share this one comment with you that a poster put up. <coughs> and she says, I've done some research on these so-called MGTOW. They are a real threat to women and children. Many of them have stalking, rape, domestic violence, and sexual assault charges against them. Many of them fantasize about young girls and have child porn on their persons. I've hacked a few accounts and found them to be, to be severely obsessed with the very women they wish to go away from. They don't want to go their own way. They want to force women to take them or do what they want to give them or what they want to give them. They want women to be sex slaves and nothing more. They will never go their own way. They thrive for women. I wish they would go their own way. There'd be less crazy psycho males. But alas, it's too good to be true. They're all fucked in the head rapists, stalkers, and abusers. I had a MGTOW stalk me for two years until I left my door unlocked and waited for him with my trusty loaded weapon and popped a cap in his ass. He's paralyzed for life now and I still saw him on the news the other night stalking another woman. These males are dangerous and most certainly not going anywhere. They're rejected and fragile and they're out for blood. Many of them end up single old men who expose themselves to and rape children. Okay, now that was from a poster. I'm not making this up. This is up on my, on the wall. Now, when we flip back, you know, we flip back and just talk back to about, about black women. In the black community, women are socialized to put men and what men want and what men think and what men believe ahead of themselves. This is reinforced a lot in our culture and especially once you become a person who calls yourself you know, a religious person, then you really get that shit jammed out in your throat. Since African American women are the most religious demographic in the United States of America, it would follow that black women hear this shit and believe this shit and are told this shit more than any other race of women in this country. So that's where that's where I, that's where I'm coming from with this. Now, 
actually, you know, actually this morning, you know, I uh, got up and I was uh, approving comments. A lot of them I just delete, delete and block. I, you know, just see the name and I delete them. I don't even read them. But this one, you know, I kind of read this one. And this guy, some African dude, African name dude, he actually chastised a female poster who talked about having standards and firm boundaries. And he told her, this, this Nick Nog had the nerve to fix his lips and tell her that the boundaries that she had should be flexible and that she should consider other points of view. And, you know, basically he was telling her that she didn't have the right to have firm boundaries because he didn't like it and it was going to be, you know, too much work for him. Fuck yes. Fuck them. Fuck them. Please. So, but, you know, from my way of thinking, you know, I'm looking at that and I'm like, to me, that's the problem. You know, that is the very problem. Black women are always considering a male point of view and they rarely feel confident enough to take themselves, take care of themselves and put their needs first and make themselves and their goals, you know, their, their top priority. They always think about some man. And what he wants and, you know, crowing about, well, you know, at least I got a man and, you know, my man this and I take care of my man that and all this old stuff. And it's like you need to be taking care of yourself and your kids. That should be your top priority, not some dude. He's a grown ass man. He's His role is supposed to be to take care of you. So for you talking about how you take care of him, I mean, what's wrong with this picture? You got some shit twisted in your head. But, you know, that's the thing. You know, black women accept all kind of silliness from men. And even when the men do some criminal shit, you don't want to call the cops on them. Or you don't want to get rid of them because, you know, you want to put them on the street because you're like, well, he won't have any place to go. Who gives a fuck? Let his ass live in the garbage can like Oscar the Grouch. And, you know, or just like, you know, you don't want to call the cops. Well, you know, we, we already have enough black men in the system. So fucking what? Let there be one more. See, that's my thing. But you all had this twisted belief that you think you need to protect and uplift and, you know, hold hold down and have the backs of and all that kind of shit to grown-ass men. And too many of you think that it's wrong to demand that a man have some money because then you want to say, well, you know, he's, he's going to think I'm a gold digger. Who the fuck gives a shit? You know, you can't live off of air, okay? It costs money for rent and mortgages and car notes and auto insurance and health insurance and health insurance premiums and co-payments and medical co-payments and kids need shoes and diapers and formula. I mean, you, okay, you're getting my point. Lights need to be on. Groceries need to be in the refrigerator. All that shit costs money. So you got a dude, and he's not contributing shit, but he's running his mouth, and, and you trying to, like, do everything all by yourself. What kind of fucking relationship is that? But that's, that's what I see. You know, a lot of women, they, you know, they don't want to make demands on them. You know, it's hard for black men and all this old bullshit. You know, you got to have a dude that got some goddamn money. He needs to have a career. He needs to have some education. He needs to have some goals, a plan for his life, and he needs to be executing it. You need to be solid proof. See, solid proof that he's working on his shit, not just running his mouth. And these are all things that men around the world expect to do and start planning to do as very, very young children. They already know that they have to meet certain standards in order to have a wife and a family. The only people who don't seem to want to follow that plan, American men. These MGTOW men and these nignogs, they don't want to do shit because it means that they're going to have to perform and meet standards and, and, and make sure that women approve of them and that makes them angrier than anything in the world. They don't want women to have to be able to have the power to pick and choose them at will. They just want to be accepted for what they are, no matter how trifling, low bit, low down and two bit they are. So, you know, what you got here in the United States is a bunch of black and white men resentful of the fact that women and society expect them to man to fuck up and earn the right to have a woman. So instead, now what we got is a couple of generations of useless idiots that have nothing to offer and all they want to do is get their dick wet. Now, this process is, this, this, this thought process that they have is contrary to the very laws of nature and what's called the survival of the fittest. Because, see, under Mother Nature's rules, only quality males get the right to mate and breed and create the next generation of whatever life form uh, that we are talking about. That's how it is amongst animals. 
and Mother Nature designs things that way. So I want you to pay very careful attention to this because this is an important lesson for women and for these stupid ass MGTOW fools and nignogs who think they're supposed to get away with having the same privileges and rights and opportunities as men who got their shit together. You don't have your shit together, you don't perform to the standards that women want you to, then you don't get no pussy. That's just the bottom line. And women, you need to really, really listen to this and you need to take fucking notes and stop with this feeling sorry for men and fucking them out of pity and all this old shit that y'all be doing. Okay, so let, let me, let's, let's go into this history lecture right quick. Now, for millions of years, you millions of years, Mother Nature has ensured the survival of certain species of, you know, the life forms using that rule called survival of the fittest. All life on this planet uses that form of make selection, reproduction, and survival. Every single one. Female life forms, which includes humans, are the gatekeepers of this planet's many species and the prevention of extinction. When you have no females, the life forms disappear from this planet, never to be seen again. Now, to accomplish this task, females select their males, their mates, uh, you know, whatever kind of life form we're talking about. On, they base it on who they consider to be prime specimens, okay? Now, this is going to vary from species to species, you know, what those standards are. But in general, what they're looking for are males who demonstrate strength, determination, bravery, a willingness to provide a willingness to protect the female and her young, a willingness to go the extra mile to show interest in her, like the courting behaviors, and a willingness to provide shelter, food safety, protection, and companionship. Okay, now, those are gonna be, you know, of different levels of importance depending upon the species, but in general, every single one of those, those things is in play when a female selects a male to mate with and to have you know the next generation with whatever life form that we're talking about okay these are standard behaviors that women expect females expect now this selection process requires that males compete males have to compete for the privilege of mating with one of the available females only when chosen does that male's dna have the opportunity to to secure its place in future generations okay so the ones who are not chosen, their lineage dies out. Why does their lineage die out? Because women don't perceive them to be of value. They do not have, they're not prime specimens. They are rejects. And that's what we have here is a whole bunch of reject specimens angry that they're not being chosen. And it's like, why should anybody choose you when there's something better out there? Okay. So for women, for pe you know, females of every species, choosing the best male also gives her an opportunity. So her family lineage and her DNA also gets an opportunity to live on in the offspring that she has, you know, sired with this, this male that she's chosen, this, the alpha male. Now, it's really interesting when you look at animals in the animal kingdom, they all understand this mate selection process, okay? They all, you know, join in wholeheartedly, they put forth their best effort and they do their best to win the affections of a potential mate. Now, this is, you know, like I keep saying, this varies from species to species. It could be, you know, they got to fight off competition. They might have to do the best dance, have the best feathers, fly the highest, dig the best burrow, sing the best song, build the best nest, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that that species requires to show that you're the best, these males do their best to make sure that they are the best, okay? The males who fail, if fail, they fail to secure a mate often live alone they live in exile they live and they die alone and from species to species i was reading all these different uh, scientific reports there's noted behavior patterns that are not normal to the species um they they just they just turn really weird and so those genes of weakness and failure and lacking and not being enough will die with them Okay, that's how animals do it, natural selection. However, you know, I mean, well, let me put it this way. Although we're the same in that, you know, in that respect, in that, you know, the people who were crippled and blind and, 
you know, whatever, had all these different afflictions, those genes were not meant to return to the gene pool. Those people were not supposed to survive, okay? But the intelligence of human beings ultimately come, you know, kind of joined with greed. And so we have a bunch of medical interventions now, medical technology, that have enabled human beings to circumvent Mother Nature's natural selection process. So what Mother Nature did was to was try to set things up so that only the, uh, the, the best survived and only the best reproduced. But by utilizing procedures such as in vitro fertilization, artificial insemination, Via Viagra, Cialis, medications which stop miscarriage, neonatal intensive care, intrauterine surgery on fetuses, drugs to increase sperm counts and testosterone, etc., humans have flooded the planet with defective gene pools. That's what's happening now. People with mental, emotional, and physically defective DNA who would never have survived to birth the past infancy are now part of the singles world, and that's what we're running into. Defective folks that should not have been here. Their, their genes should not even be here, okay? But they are, and then this is, this is what we have to deal with, a bunch of violent, crazy fucks. Now, this has interesting side effects, you know, and I understand that parents want to have their children, you know. They feel happy. They feel blessed. They get to have a kid when they otherwise would not have had one. And they're really, you know, excited about that. I can understand that. You know, I, I get that. But you got to think about the long-term cost. What's the cost to those kids of being defective and to a society filled with defective genes and DNA over the long term? These people are breeding, okay? So these, gene, these defective genes are becoming part of the gene pool. In every generation, we see more and more fucked up attitudes and more mental illness, more physical illness, more weakness, more dependency, and more craziness. Okay, that's what we see. Violent, crazy behavior. It is becoming more and more prevalent. So, you know, this to me, this is my theory. You know, this is not written in stone. But I have, you know, scientific facts that back me up in that what I'm saying about the medical technology and interventions is a fact. Everything that I mentioned here is actually happening. So I think my theory has a lot of merit. And uh, I think people didn't really consider this. You know, they just thought about the money they was going to make from saving all these damn babies. And, you know, people having people set up to have children that they shouldn't have had. And uh, I think that that's, you know, it's going to cause problems in the society over the long term that our people have not even understood are going to happen yet. They don't even, they haven't even considered the long term ramifications of what's happening here and circumventing Mother Nature's natural selection process. This is just, this shouldn't have happened. Okay, so then as women, of course, we're looking at these dudes. And we see that these males are not really the men that we're looking for. And they're not really the men that they used to be. This new breed of dudes is incapable of competing for a mate in a fashion designed by Mother Nature. And they're confused and enraged at being excluded from the mating process. And you can see it in everything. I mean, you just go take a tour around online. You see it. They call themselves Red Pillars and MGTOW and TFLers. And they're all fucking losers. They're all losers in the mating game. And they're angry and enraged that they are. Okay, but, you know, that's their parents' fault and possibly their grandparents' fault. That's who's responsible for them being here and being losers. It's not us. It's not women. They're taking it out on us, but we, we're not the ones responsible for them being all fucked up. That's their parents. They need to, that's who you need to look at. So bottom line, these dudes are not prime specimens. <laughs> They're rejects. And healthy women who seek the best candidates for breeding, which is her innate nature, Okay, that's in our cellular structure. They're not going to choose those dudes for a mate because you, every cell in your body is telling you this DNA is faulty and defective. I don't want to have faulty, defective offspring, so I'm not going to fuck with this dude. So you know that choosing that defective, inadequate male for reproduction is a violation of the law of nature. Okay, so these dudes, you know, they really not understanding what's going on. That's why I'm trying to break this down. We also have another factor. Tell about 50 or 60 years ago, wars, you know, the last one being Vietnam, the big, you know, last big war, killed off hundreds of thousands of males in their prime. Now, most of these dudes were too young to have families at the time that they died. You know, some of them, but most of them were not. You know, they were fresh out of high school or pulled out of college or whatever. 
And um, so, you know, the grade A dudes, the prime specimens, were the ones that went off to battle, leaving behind the grade B and C men at home with the women, which gave them opportunities that they would never have otherwise had. Okay, so they got used to that, right? But now that we haven't had any wars and the prime specimens are, you know, in abundance, well, no woman is going to choose the B and C dudes. We, we, we don't have to. There's not like, you know, there's other options. It's not like they're the only choice now. So they, they, you know, they know that they're lacking, they know they're defective. And so when you're a grade C or B dude, you know you have to try harder. You have to be like Avis and try harder to catch up with Hertz. So when a guy has, knows he has to try harder to ensure that he gets selected, he wants to do, you know, he wants to get up the heart and mind and body of a potential mate. So he's going to perform. He's going to try to perform better than the competition. And at this grade, at this point with the grade A men out here, the B and C dudes don't really have a chance. And they know it, and that's what they're angry about. So to sum things up, when you look at mating, there's two ways that animals, as well as humans, find a mate. Number one, you should have to understand, the females choose their male partners. And then point number two, the males compete to have access to those females to be chosen. Okay, that is the mating process for 99.9% .9 of the life forms on this planet. You know, amoebas and things of that nature are excluded. Now with both types of these, with both of these types of sexual selection, the ability to mate is based on you know, individual traits. With like when females choose their male partner, it's something called intersexual selection. When males fight over the access to females, it's called intrasexual selection. Isn't that interesting? Now, intersexual selection is more than females just deciding which guy is the sexiest or, you know, the cutest, the hottest, whatever. When women are looking for a, a, a mate using intersexual selection, they're looking for somebody who's going to make their offspring not only survive but thrive. So they want to pick a mate that has good genes, okay? I, I keep reiterating this so that you guys can understand where I'm coming from with what's available currently in our society. I mean, you can even look at some of these dudes. Look at how their heads are misshapen. Their faces are crooked. Their eyes are too close together or too far apart. Their ears are ops, you know, lopsided. Their jaws are weird. Um, their teeth are odd. You know, their jaw, I mean, all of these things are, are like defects. Okay, these are the people who need an IEP. Okay, that's something's wrong with you. That is not a prime specimen. But yet, these people are going to go through school, go through, you know, with all this assistance and everything, and they're going to get out here in the gene pool, and they're going to create kids. Okay, all these like autistic and icebergers and all this stuff. Okay, these people have problems. And they're bringing that shit into the gene pool, and this is what's going to be available for your daughters to date and marry. Okay, so then you wonder why your grandkids are all kinds of fucked up. This is why. This is what's going on here. So when a female is looking for the best mate, she's looking for somebody who's healthy. Okay, somebody with good genes. She wants to pass on the genes which are the fittest in, in, in a genetic sense. Okay, that way her offspring have the best chance for being at the top of the food chain in whatever animal kingdom we're talking about. Okay, now, how do they do that? Because you're looking at, you know, these, these good genes or, you know, somebody who's healthy and got good genes, okay. So, birds, like peacocks, for instance. The, the peahen is kind of plain. The peacock male is the one with the big, you know, fan of feathers and all the colors and all of that stuff. And those things, those tails are enormous. I mean, they could take up, you know, like 20 feet spread for the, the really, you know, the big uh, mature peacock. And those colors and that spread play a role in select, sexual selection because that is attractive to the female peacock. Okay, they, the females also choose males who have the best stuff. Now, of course, what is stuff? Stuff, that's a big umbrella and it, it covers um, a wide range of things depending upon the animal species. It could mean the best territory. You know, which basically is he's got a he provides a a wide area that offers food and water for the female and her offspring. 
Um, I read this one example. It says something called red-winged blackbirds are very territorial and will attack other animals that come into their space, including humans. They're seriously fierce little birds. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then we have aggression. We look at aggression. We look at strength, fights to the death. Um, elks and moose or something, they do that. Sometimes um, this guy I used to know who worked in the National Forest up in um, Yellowstone said that sometimes they will get locked in a battle and their horns, you know, the adults, uh, the bucks, will, their horns will get locked together and they both die. They basically starve to death because they can't get them um, unhooked. But they're fighting for have access to mate with the, the one, you know, a ready available female. So that's what intersexual selection is. That's what males compete for access to females. So basically, whoever wins that battle, whoever wins that fight, gets to mate with all the females. So the lions, like, you know, if he successfully fights off the other males, he proves his strength, his bravery, his dominant personality, and uh, that big mane that they have, that also gets the lioness's attention. It's like the equivalent of a nice beard on a dude's handsome face, okay? Um, so, you know, he does all, he fights off all the other ones, you know, the females be like, oh, you know, my hero. And then they mate with them. And birds uh, like to decorate. There's a, a bird called a male, the bower bird. And he builds this big elaborate structure, they call it a bower, out of twigs. And he decorates it with, you know, feathers and flowers and whatever he finds, ribbons and whatever. And the female bower birds look at all the different little offerings and they pick the male that offers the best bower, the best the the bower that they like the best, because that's where they're gonna live, right? And um, even insects get in on the deal. They they the male dance flies will catch something and wrap it in silk and give it to the female dance fly. So not only does she get a present, but she gets a snack. <laughs> Elephant seals are another example. They're big, you know. You see them; those things are huge. The males are typically five to six times larger than the females, but they uh, will, you know, take over a beach and they fight off the other males and the females come. And so the, the baddest one, the one they call those harems, he could get to mate with 30, 40, 50, 100 different female um, elephant seals. Um, but the smaller males, they didn't get any territory and they didn't get a harem, so they have to wait on the sidelines or try to sneak in and mate when the big male isn't watching. And uh, so, you know, that's, they just basically ass out because they don't rate, they don't have the power, they don't have to eat. And so the females ignore them. And, you know, other mammals have similar breeding behaviors, like kangaroos and gorillas. They fight over uh, who gets to mate with the females. And uh, elephants, they look, in, you know, they look for that kind of dominance. You know, he can fight off the, the uh, males and be the biggest and the strongest. And then he comes in and he stays with her and fights off the other bull elephants until she's her estrus ends. And then, um, you know, he goes on about his business. They don't stay to help raise the young like, uh, like some do, but that's the way that they do things. And then others, you know, they, they will dance or they'll give gifts to the female. I mean, there's all kinds of courting behaviors that animals go through to attract it and keep the attention of a female of their species. Human females seek similar qualities in their mates. I don't understand why this is so hard for these men to understand what, what it is that they don't, then they claim they're educated and sensible, then they should have studied this shit in school. You know, anthrop an anthropology class teaches you this. So I, I know I'm not really understanding why they don't get it. Because, you know, women look for men who are tall and physically attractive and men who can prove that they're strong and a protector, a provider, who men who are smart, who are loving to the offspring, who are willing to commit to her because that provides a feeling of mental and emotional and physical safety, which is what women are looking for. Women also look for a man who just demonstrates some leadership skills. He's decisive. He, you know, he makes shit happen. And of course, they want somebody to be sexy, you know, amorous because he has to inspire her to want to mate with him. I mean, she's not going to just be like looking at him and then, you know, I mean, he, he has to, you know, make that happen. So, of course, these traits are going to vary from one woman to another. You know, they're going to be various levels of importance from one woman to another. But the man who possesses all of those, he's going to get his choice of women. And those are the men that we call the alpha males. They get all the pussy. All of it. Because they have every single thing that women are looking for. The beta males have some. 
and the other dudes, you know, they might have one if they're lucky. So when you got a guy, you know, who's who's unwilling to develop himself or he's incapable of demonstrating those traits I just rattled off, he's going to be passed over by women. So it's like you have a choice here, dudes. Either you get with the program and you give women what they want to make them want to mate with your tired, funky ass, or you just going over in the corner over there and just be by yourself jacking off. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Those are the two choices. You know, so you ranting and raving and complaining that women don't want you. Well, they're never going to want you because you, know, you do something to make them want you. Okay, you have to change yourself. And you look at this thing I found this really um, interesting is, you know, we talk about rejection. Um, female animals protect their re reproductive interest. Um through that whole courtship process, the whole courtship and mating and reproductive process. The females in the animal kingdom have some very interesting methods of avoiding mating with losers. You know, when we talk about humans, you know, the girl, she may just ghost him. You know, she may just straight out tell him. She might cheat on him with a stronger, more virile male. She may tell him it's not working out. She may divorce him and leave him. She may just disappear on his fucking ass. Who knows? But the bottom line is he's been rejected as not being good enough. Now, when you look at, I was looking at some different examples. There's the, the female dragonfly. Girlfriend really got it going on. It's like, she's like, you know, if she gets pursued by a male she's not interested in, she will go so far as to fall down from the sky and play dead. Because she wants to make sure that the rejected one's gone their merry way. What? How great would it be if women could do that? Dude comes up to you, hey, Ma, you know, you beautiful today. Oh, she just fall out and be play dead on the sidewalk. And then he goes on about his business, pop up, be on about, you know, on about your way. That would be just so funny. But, you know, with some of these dudes, you know, so they get rejected, right? What they do is want to turn around and waste time arguing with the women who reject them. They want to argue about why you should give them what they want and, and why you should be that way and why they're good and all this stuff. They want to argue with you to try to force you to accept the bullshit that they're offering. In reality, that's stupid. That's a very illogical approach. Because while you're busy arguing and battling with that woman that rejected you, other males are busy getting with all the other women that you should be over there pursuing. That's where you should be directing your time and attention and energy. So you basically, you lose out from the woman who rejected you and you lose out on other opportunities because you spent your time arguing with some woman who already don't want you. I so said, you lose out, you don't get anybody because you were stupid. So here we are now, you know, we're in 2017. We're 40, 50 years after developing all these millions, all these uh, medical interventions that put millions of men who would never be chosen by women to mate with on this planet. And you got to remember, you know, the majority of these situations were used on males because male babies are the most frail. They have the highest infant mortality rate, the highest rate of birth defects, the highest rate of learning disabilities. Males are just, they're very fragile beings when they're young. And, um... I will do another video to talk about my theory about what's wrong with them in that respect. But uh, for now, we'll just put the shelf that. But somebody remind me. But anyway, these dudes, you know, they're, they're angry because they did get chosen. They believe that because they're males and because they want a mate, that they should have the right. And they just don't understand that, you know, Mother Nature has taken care of all that. You're not going to get to have the kind of woman that you want instead you guys have to understand either you got to change or you're gonna be alone that's it because even if you go and get you a woman from a foreign country they know the game you're thinking they don't know shit then women tell they they are very smart and they will play your fucking ass and take you for everything that you got and then you get even double taken because of the fact that you pulled them up out of some country or you did something to them that their government is going to take care of them. Trust. Trust that. And you're going to be the one on the hook to pay. So there's going to be millions of y'all. You're going to die alone and you're going to die angry in some nursing home somewhere. And you're going to be mad because you are not with the woman that you, the types of woman, the top quality woman that you want to be with. So here you are, you young right now, right? So you, but you get together with these other losers and you commiserate and blame women for not choosing you. You pump each other up with your trite phrases, your foul words, and your negative thoughts about women. 
And who the fuck do you think wants to be with you when they see that that's how you think? You shooting yourself in the foot. You, I mean, no woman wants to be with a man like that. And you're just like, you're verbally and emotionally abusive to every woman that you come into contact with. You expose yourself to be a fucking jerk. And you think some woman wants to be bothered with your tri- trifling two-bit piece of shit ass? I don't think so. But instead of being angry at women, these dudes need to take a long, hard look at themselves and just accept the fact that they're total losers in the mating game. Go on over there somewhere. Be a MGTOW. Go your own way. Just like the lion with no pride and the bull elephant with no herd and the wolf with no pack. You are losers, you're rejects, and nobody wants to be bothered with you. You know, you, 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 the only way that you might be able to do it, I just thought of it, is, you know, some of these, these low, these uh, fucked up DNA people walking around here are women. So if you, you know, got them kind of, you know, you not too wrapped too tight, you not too hot on the DNA chain, you can get with another woman. And you can get with another low quality DNA human being that happens to be female. And then y'all can go on over there and have your little defective children together. But um, I think that instead of being angry at women, you know, just take a look at yourself. And you women, the point of this video for you is to get you to understand that there's nothing wrong with the way that you are setting things up and the expectations that you have for a man to perform and the expectation that you expect for a man to have something for you, to provide for you and your young and to be about something that you can respect and admire. There is nothing wrong with that. Do not let any man talk you out of that or try to embarrass you for it or call you a gold digger or anything else. Just laugh in his fucking face. So that, you know, you don't because you don't have any gold, don't try to put down the men that do. And don't try to, to, to put position it so that you try to have me accept your broke, trifling, two-bit piece of shit, minimum wage making ass as my man. You don't wait. You don't, you don't qualify. You're not what I want. Nothing about you is what I want. And I'm straight telling you to your goddamn face. Go away. You're a loser. And I'm not interested in you. So you ladies need to find the courage to say that. You know, even before MGTOW was formed and that term, the pickup artist, you know, PUAs was used. In the black community, we already had players and we had pimps and we had men who gamed on women. It's the same shit that these dudes now, but you know how white folks get a hold of something and slap a little acronym on it for marketing purposes and act like they invented the shit. That's the same thing with this MGTOW. They ain't, ain't, shit, ain't, ain't shit new here. But, you know, for black women, this is nothing new. Black men have been treating black women like this for generations. But, you know, now the white boys are getting in on the nonsense as well. So the, the bottom line, though, is all you sisters always talking about, well, you know, that's why you need to swirl and get with a man of another, these other, you know, get you a white boy and all sorts of shit. Uh-uh, shut up and stop talking that shit. Because men are all the same. It's the culture here that is making them this way, not what they look like on the outside. Okay, you got to stop with this paint job shit. That has nothing to do with what kind of man he is, how he thinks and what his goals are, his life plan, and how he thinks about and treats women and children. That's what you better look like. And I don't give a fuck if he's green with pink polka dots. If he acts right, then that's the man for you. If he doesn't, I don't give a shit what color he is and what he looks like, then he's a fucking asshole and put his ass in the wind. You know, skin color just has no bearing on, on anything about how a man is, and please stop talking about that. The bottom line is if a guy doesn't meet your standards of manhood and he doesn't treat you the way that you want to be treated, and he thinks that he should have the privilege of access to your body and to mate with you, without performing at levels required of men for him to be qualified to call himself a man, then he should be denied access to all pussy, all of it, worldwide. He should be denied your attention, denied any conversation with you, denied any and everything from the female gender. His fucking ass needs to learn how to act and he needs to learn how to treat women. Until he does, put his ass on punishment. You get nothing, nothing, until you learn how to act and how to talk to women. Fuck him. And you don't get the perks of being of having a woman without giving her what she needs, motherfucker. You ladies need to stick to that and you need to stand firm and don't give them shit unless you get what you want first. You want money, you want a ring, you want commitment, you want a car, whatever the fuck it is that you want, you get it from his ass first. And if he doesn't want to give it to you, then fuck it, move on to the next one. There's too many men out here. 
remember that relationships, just like anything else, is a fucking business, okay? You give something to get something. You guys are there to exchange, and whatever that exchange is, it could be love and commitment, time, attention, whatever it is that you two have agreed that you're exchanging, because that's going to vary from person to person. But it's still like it's equivalent of a business deal. I got this, you got that, we're going to put our shit together. Okay, that is a contract. That's an agreement. That is a business deal. Okay, so I know it doesn't sound romantic, but this is the reality of what relationships are. They've always been like that. From the very day when, when people came courting and with their dowry and they wanted to pick up husband so that they had a good family name or was wealthy and all that stuff. Where marriage is always from the very, from out the gate has been about business. So don't try to, you know, romanticize the shit and say, oh, but you know, love, fuck love. If it love wasn't important, then people wouldn't be getting divorced so much, right? Love, ain't, you got to look at more than love. You will love the motherfucker who treats you well. That's who you love. And so you got to remember, though, that a man, words of love from a man, they don't mean shit. Unless he backs that shit up with actions, with goods, and with services. He's got to do for you. He's got to do for them damn kids that he wants you to have. He's got to do for the community in which he wants you to live. He's got to be about something. And any woman who doesn't understand that was going to get played and used up and be a part of this pump and dump shit. And I don't know what to say to you. So take my words very carefully. Listen to this video very carefully. I know I covered a lot of ground and I said some things that some people are probably going to find to be very harsh and just a little bit too real. I don't care because I've been holding this shit in and I'm done now. I've said what I need to say. You need to follow Mother Nature's rule of survival of the fittest and if any motherfucker who don't meet that standard, kick him out your life and don't look back. This is Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com. Talk to you soon. Now that you've seen some of the grade A content that the Depsterism channel offers, please become a subscriber. Just click the subscribe button down below. Then you'll see a little bell. Click that after and then you'll be able to get notifications sent directly to your cell phone of when I post new content. You can be one of the very first people to review the new videos, like them, comment them on them and share them. We'd like you to do all of those things to help the channel grow. I appreciate your support. So become a subscriber. Tell your friends.